Hello and welcome to this introduction video on Viper OS. I am going to make a series of videos in which I will teach you what is so special about Viper OS. But first, what is Viper OS? Viper OS is a Vim inspired, Python powered, and keyboard centric GNU Linux distribution built for makers. Viper OS is not a gimmick. I did not create this distribution just for the sake of creating a Linux distribution. It was created to solve certain specific scenarios and use cases. I wanted an operating system which allows me to work more productively and it allows me to do repetitive tasks more quickly. I have been using Viper OS in some shape or form for the last three plus years as my daily driver. In fact, I'm using it right now. It takes inspiration from Vim and encourages a keyboard driven workflow. As a matter of fact, I will show you one scenario at the end of the video. Viper OS can be easily customized using Vim and I have as a matter of philosophy not buried the customization scripts. They are right there in your home folder as a reminder that you can modify them. It comes with dozens of pre-configured software such as NeoVim, Ranger, Conch, Qtile, Rofi etc with same defaults. Out of the box, it comes with more than 50 productivity scripts and you are encouraged to add more on your own. It comes with many softwares which are used by data scientists pre-configured and pre-installed so that you can immediately start to work. As I said before, Viper OS was primarily created to make you more productive. I wanted a system which I can use in order to do repetitive tasks faster and automate many of the things which I do in computing on a day to day basis. Lastly, Viper OS encourages a terminal user interface centric workflow for speed and efficiency. This doesn't mean there are no GUI applications. It simply means that most of the work that we do on a day to day basis can be made more effective and it can be automated using the terminal. So that is what we do. That said, you don't have to memorize commands in order to work with Viper OS because everything is mapped to keyboard shortcuts. And once you get the hang of the keyboard shortcuts, which in my opinion are logically laid out, you will be able to work more effectively. When I initially started with a keyboard driven workflow, honestly, I did not like it. In fact, my fingers were aching, but I persisted and over a period of time, I think I have developed those muscle memories or the strength, whatever you want to call it. And I can now work much more effectively, faster and more productively using Viper OS. So I suggest you go to gitlab.com slash magna core slash Viper OS and I will give the link in the description of the video and read the readme. I have laid out, you know, what Viper OS is, what is the philosophy behind it, screenshots, shortcuts, the shortcuts document is important and I will be going through each and every shortcut and showing how to use the system. Here is the document. Then uh, we already went through this list. You can read it one more time. Who should use Viper OS, the system requirements and things to know before installing Viper OS. In the next video, I will show you how to install it in a virtual machine. And then you can also see the preloaded software it comes with. Now some may say this is bloat, you know, it comes with uh, uh, too many software. But the fact of the matter is I use all these softwares on a day to day basis. So I've included all of them. Maybe you will discover some new software. If you don't like something, you can always uninstall it or you can add the software that you require. All right, next comes the exciting part. I'm going to show you one flow or use case for Viper OS. Again, there are dozens of other flows and use cases. This is just one of them, something very common that all of us do. And that is to consume your YouTube subscriptions. Now, what I do on a daily basis is to scan all the YouTube subscriptions and there are more than 250 channels which I subscribe to. So you can imagine if I go through the YouTube's website and try to scan the videos, it's going to take a lot of time. Second, I want to save the video links which I want to watch. Now you may be asking, why don't you watch the videos on YouTube itself? Well, there are a couple of reasons for it. First of all, it's a sluggish experience. You don't get the same kind of snappiness and the feel that you can get when you are watching it locally on MPB. Second, you have to deal with ads. Thirdly, you cannot watch them based on priority. So for example, there are certain videos which you may want to watch at certain uh, distant point in the future or later. 
and there may be certain videos which you immediately want to watch also you may have some long videos which you cannot watch in a single sitting so you may want to split the videos and then watch them and i will tell you why i do it later then i would like to download the videos after downloading i want to categorize them based on priority then split the videos as i said i don't watch any video uh, front to back i split them and i watch them in chunks divide and rule it is part of my productivity system which maybe i will teach you at some other point in time and then i can slot them for consumption as per priority i will tell you more about it as we go along so let me first of all enable my keys so that you know when i type something on the keyboard you can see what i am typing you don't have to do it uh, it's just for tutorial so let me click on show keys so first of all i need to go to an empty workspace so i press mod 5 and this is going to take me to an empty workspace as you can see over here this one was empty i'm going to start liferia which contains all my youtube subscriptions and i'm going to say update all as you can see there are more than uh, 267 subscriptions which i have and it's going through all of them and fetching the videos which were posted so we just have to wait for a minute i already did it in the morning so there are not a lot of videos but let's see what we get so you can see already we have 23 videos which have come in the next thing that i'm going to do is to go through all the videos and save the ones which i like so i just click on the first one and i will keep scrolling through the list so if i like a video i can right click on it i can say copy link location and then i can press mod y so mod y is going to save this link after validating it in a text file we'll come to that later okay so after scanning through all the youtube videos you can see i am done so i can close this now if i go to mod 2 where i have the terminal let me open that text file so you see i only saved one there could be 10 also 20 also 3 also it doesn't matter it depends upon you know if i find a video useful i will save it so the video has now been saved next thing that i need to do is to download it so in order to download it i can go to the terminal and i can say video download and it will ask me whether you want to download the video from youtube or somewhere else like instagram facebook etc so i will simply say youtube now the video is going to be downloaded let me just pause and come back when this is done the download has now finished and by the way if you were paying attention when i saved the url there was an audio cue the audio cue tells me that the command that I have executed has been successful. So I can clean the screen and I can also delete this URL and close the file. The next thing that I can do is to process the video. Uh, what do I mean by processing? It simply means I need to put it in a staging area. So whatever data that comes, whether it's a video or some kind of a text file, PDF, you know, whatever task I need to act on, something I need to work on. So what I do is, I just put it in a folder called copy to HDD. This is the folder and a task capture bin. And from there, I can put it to copy to HDD in case I need to copy it to uh, the hard drive, etc. etc. Anyway, so I press EVP and it will put this video over here, as you can see. Now, let's say, for example, I want to categorize and sort the video. In order to do that, I can press the keys, for example, dms dms has moved it to a different folder so i have shortcuts where i can send files immediately to certain common folders which i work with so where did the video go if i go to the split folder you can see the video has come over here dms sent it to the split folder which means i need to split this video so you can see i can just press keyboard shortcuts and quickly navigate between the folders i frequently visit 
Not only that, I can also move files between folders just by pressing keyboard shortcuts. In this particular case, I would like to paste this video inside the trading folder. Now, let's say for example, I have some videos which I have downloaded earlier. And I want to consume them in a podcast manner. Which means I don't really care about the video. I just want to convert them into audio and save them inside my phone. Now, in order to do that, what I will do is I will press the V key to select all the files. Then I can press EVA. EVA means execute video to audio. Now it will ask me, do I want to delete the original files after processing? I say yes. And now it is extracting the audio from all the videos and you can see they have all now been converted into audio. Now don't worry if you cannot follow all the keyboard shortcuts. This is not a tutorial. I just want to show you one workflow and how I use it on a day to day basis and how it makes me more productive. So you see, now I have all the audio. Next, I'm going to move all these audio files in a folder where I stage them for splitting. So I select all the files, cut them and then I go to audio. And speed, OK, long split. So I'm going to put it over here. Next, I need to split all the audio files. So again, I select them by pressing the V key and I say E M or rather E L S. Now again, it's going to ask me whether I want to retain the original files or not. In this case, I do not. So I will say yes, delete the original files. And it's going to split them into approximately 7.5 minutes in length. So there you go. Now I have all the pieces. I can now put them in a folder which syncs with my phone. So I will select everything, cut it. I will go to the folder where I put all my articles and I paste it over here. Now this will get automatically synced with my phone. So when I'm traveling, I can listen to it in my phone. So that was a quick demo because I was speaking and explaining. So it was happening a little slower, but in real time, it happens very fast. So you see quickly, I was able to scan 267 YouTube channels, get all the videos, download them, split them and sort them and even convert it to a podcast and put it on my phone. Similarly, there are many things which I do on a day to day basis, which I hope you also do. And Viper OS makes it very, very efficient for you to do them. I hope you enjoyed this demo and I will see you in the next video where I will show you how you can download and install Viper OS.